whether you think you'd be the best person for it or not, you learn how to do it. And then that is a training ground for being a leader in whatever part of your career that you choose. And, and um, yeah, so. Thank you. Okay, well, so, so I'm the best. And then keep your hands up and I'll make the list. For the first time, the liberal are no longer the official institution. So, has it changed anything for policies or direction? Um, yes and no. So, firstly, when you're in opposition, you're in opposition. When it's a majority government, opposition can't band together and change the government's mind. So, really, you're all in opposition, you're all opposition members. And we are each as uh, we're each, well, Parliament is not government, as you guys know, and most of the Canadian public doesn't know. Um, so when you're a member of Parliament, you represent your community as, with, as, as empowered to do that as if you're, you know, the minister of something or another. So I don't see that there is such a huge difference between official opposition and unofficial opposition. Now, the, the reality is our numbers are very small, so we really got kicked down in the last election. And as Mr. Ray says, we are humbled but not humiliated. So uh, uh, have we changed our policies for, for that? I would say that there is more of a, there is a, a climate in our caucus of like, what are some of the, the bold, gutsy things that we could do? Like, what have we got to lose? And, and I would contend that it is the Liberal Party that has a history of doing bold, gutsy, courageous policy uh, for Canada and stuff that was politically risky and costly at the time, but it was in the public interest, and it has become the fabric of Canada today, so everybody sees it as centrist. And I could name a lot of examples, but I will mention the Charter of Rights and Freedoms, Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms. At the time, very contentious, very groundbreaking. Today, it's what we expect of Canada. We're equal, and we have legal and constitutional protection. But it was not a no-brainer then, 30 years ago. And in fact, the research, I read a summary of research that you guys may be aware of that shows that other countries' constitutions were, were trying to model and mirror the American constitution more than the Canadian until 30 years ago when we repatriated our constitution and embedded this Charter of Rights and Freedoms. And since then, the research shows that far more countries' constitutional changes have shaped them towards what Canada's is like rather than the United States. So groundbreaking at the time, the fabric of Canadian life now, whether it's you know, our Species at Risk Act or our mentally, whether it is uh, getting rid of a systemic deficit in debt in the 1990s, very groundbreaking at the time, Pohan Middle of the Road now, that the Liberal Party has done a lot of, whether it's gay marriage, I mean, I could name a lot. So we're now thinking about, hmm, does the, does the war on drugs really work in terms of cannabis? Everybody says it doesn't. Is there a political party that might have the courage to tackle that very difficult and possibly vote losing, but good for the country public policy? Because the war on drugs and cannabis really does one thing, provides a regulatory monopoly to the criminal underworld, which results in violence in the streets. So if we want to stop the violence or reduce the violence, we're going to take that monopoly away from the criminal underworld and take and put the regulations in the hands of government like we do with two far more addictive substances, um, alcohol and tobacco. So that's, so that's actually the Liberal Party in our last convention. The members said yes, that we're supporting that there will be a legalization of cannabis. And now as a caucus, we take that, you know, that's pretty easy to say when you're on a convention floor and you've got some persuasive speakers and you put your hand up yes, and it passed. But <clears throat> it's something that a lot of uh, Canadians have concerns about and interest in. And so now it's up to the caucus to think about, okay, what's the next step? We've got a direction from our members. What is the way to really engage the, the public in thinking about this, discussing it, giving us their views? How would it work? Would it work? And so we're embarking on that voyage. Would we be doing it uh, if we were? Um, 
I mean, I think that's what the Liberal Party does, frankly. But now is the time we're saying, okay, let's do those, you know, those really uh, courageous, bold <coughs> policies because we we can. Yeah, well, and of course we have, we do have something to lose, so that's easy. You know, I mean, I'm the one that said that too. <laughs> that the reality is, we think that the Liberal Party has really delivered a lot of value for Canada in the past in our in our commitment to not be ideological, but to think about what do people need in the short term, but what's the public interest in the long term? And I think the Liberal Party has has been the one that. Um, has demonstrated our commitment to the long-term public good, even at our political expense. So we're very committed to Canada, and we and we we want to bring back uh, the ability to to uh, contribute to Canada that kind of thing.